Yeah. 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 Do you want to hear about the cows? Yeah. Well, we're just going to talk about milk and the milk industry, just for about a few moments. So, so Nigel, thank you for hosting us. Where are we, first of all? So, we're at our farm in Devon. And we're on our farm tour, and I'm about to show you the milking parlour. And it's a, de- it's a family business? It's a family run business, and actually, how long? since 1950. Is that old? Yeah, the farm was started <laughs> in 1950. Don't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, I'm third generation. Yeah, yeah. I make the jokes here, yeah, I make the jokes. <laughs> See, I'm third generation, yeah. 1950. Farm was started with 15 cows and 50 acres, and now we've got 200 cows, 400 acres. And, and we, we stayed here before, and you do bed and breakfast, and sort of you, you rent out small, how would you describe them here? It's a glamping. glamping it's a glam- yeah, glamping. And, and they are really good. We've come back for our, it's the second time, so it is really fantastic. So, but, but what sparked this conversation really is, when I was here last time, you were telling me about the milk and, and the, various, the various operations and stuff. Give us, you, you mentioned, was it the milk board, what was it called? Milk Marketing Board. So Ted, talk, talk very briefly about that and what it developed into. So when the Milk Marketing Board was deregulated, then we all got, we all got the opportunity to sell it to different, uh, different companies, be it Dairy Crest or, or farmer and cooperatives and different companies. And some farmers went in different directions and some people stayed with the cooperatives. The people who stayed with the cooperatives were doing it for the correct ethics, but maybe weren't getting as much of a return on it. Yeah. Um, so we did stay with cooperative. We were perhaps losing a bit of money on our neighbours that went with some of the bigger companies like Dairy, Dairy Crest and boys like that that were selling direct to the supermarkets. Um, but now tides have turned a little bit and the cooperative now that I'm with Arla, which is yeah. a European-wide cooperative, mm. um, but it's a farm-owned cooperative and now we're doing quite well now and the farm-owned cooperative seems to be in quite a good position now. Fantastic. So tides have turned now. So I, I remember Nigel telling me this last year and genuinely, I mean, for, for what it's worth, I actually get my milk from my local co-op and I buy it the Arla brand purely because what Nigel told me, you know, does benefit the, the, the smaller guys like you. And obviously we like you, Nigel, that's why we return. And that's exactly what I want to do. When my glamping guests <laughs> yeah. come and I share them on the farm, I want to show them and the kids where milk comes from and create a link so they realise the milk comes from a cow, a Nigel's farm, or whoever's farm, yeah, sure. as opposed to up the dairy supermarket shelf. Like supermarket shelf. I want to get you know people to realise provenance of milk and where it comes from. Fantastic. It's a really important thing. Nigel, thank you for your hospitality. No problem. Cheers, mate.